everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Guess who's back? The 2003 Honda Odyssey. Hey, it's got another misfire. <laughs> this is the one where we diagnosed it last time and replaced the fuel injector, and it's run fine for oh, since last year. And then the owner took it on a longer trip. He said he uh, felt some shudders once in a while, and then going up over the big mountain here, he said it just lost power, and at the top he could smell something burning, he looked underneath and the cat was glowing red. Well, <laughs> that to me screams ignition misfire because the fuel is still getting in the cylinder. So let's start it up, see how it runs, see if it has a misfire right now. Oh yeah, definitely a constant miss. Classic. And on these Hondas, the misfire counters aren't that great, so I just do a old school drop test because the coils are easily accessible. Here's cylinder one in the front bank. Well, nothing there. No drop. Definitely a difference there. Definitely a difference there. Let's try the back coils. Yep, definitely contribution there. Same with that one. Same with that one. So they all they're all contributing, except for this one. So the easiest thing to do here is just swap two coils around and see if the misfire moves with the coil. Alright, here we go. It's a six millimeter hex retaining bolt. So we'll take those out. Unplug these guys. And do the classic swap around. Well, I guess some of them have been replaced. <laughs> so, put this one in here. This one in here. Now this one's stamped Hitachi, the one that was not contributing, and the, the other one is No Name. So very simple, plug them in, fire it up. Still have a misfire. Alright, so it looks like we have a dead coil. If we take these bolts out, you should be able to hear a spark when they're plugged in. This one, no contribution. Yep, so pretty easy. However, we can get him a new coil, but since the cat was red hot, is it possible that the cat's also damaged? So we need to give him a full, complete, uh, you know, diagnosis. Uh, or he might just want to go for the coil and see how it drives, but you can always do a back pressure check. You know, on the cylinder it's not working with the pressure transducer to see if the cat is actually restricted. By the way, this number two spark plug, it's like the center electro is not there anymore. Might have been in there for a little while. Huge gap. And these are iridiums. NGK. Huh. I thought iridiums lasted forever. Maybe not. Maybe that's why the coil failed if the gap's that huge. So this thing needs an ignition tune-up first and foremost, but let's plug in the pressure transducer and see if this cat's plugged up or not. All right, we got the 
homemade pressure transducer connected. Turn it on. And by the way, I am looking for viewers who want to test out the, the prototype. It'll be available very soon. Custom scale, minus 25 to 225 PSI, we're at zero. Let's start it up. Let's do a snap throttle. And shut her down. All right, let's, let's look at that exhaust, exhaust pulse. It doesn't look bad at all. So you see when it's idling, we're right at zero PSI. And as we snap the throttle, the peak compression increases and the intake manifold vacuum drops. But on the exhaust stroke, The exhaust stroke looks pretty good. We don't go above zero PSI. All right, if it was really restricted, you would see this part also, you know, elevate above, above atmosphere. So, it actually looks good for the customer. All you need is some spark plugs and I would suggest two coils, you know, since that last original one, that could cause a problem. Um, we could scan it for code, see if the catalyst is, you know, actually active, but I don't think he cares about that. He just wants it to drive fine. Um, that's about it. So go get some parts and install them. Be right back. All right, back to the Honda Odyssey. I talked to the customer. He said, get it fixed. And he also told me, hey, look, by the front seat, we got some spare parts in the box that says air filter on it. So I opened the box and found some tune-up parts, uh, almost a complete set of coils. So five original Hitachi coils and some spark plugs. The, these he said he replaced about a year ago. So these are NGK Platinum, I guess, the PZFRs, and they don't look terrible uh, and then he said you know the spark plugs shouldn't be that old why are they worn they're NGKs they're iridiums I'm like that's what I use they should last 120,000 miles but he barely got 20,000 miles out of them what the heck so I ordered some brand new NGK iridiums from the parts store and let's see how they compare to the ones there in this van so, on the left we have the really worn, prematurely worn NGK plug. And I immediately asked the customer, where did you get these? He said, Amazon. They're like eight bucks a piece, they're pretty expensive. I'm like, ah, Amazon. They're probably counterfeit NGK plugs from, well, it says Japan on here, but I don't think so. I think these are from the mainland. <laughs> I don't want to say China, but probably China. And let's see the differences here. Look at the script. It's like crooked and peeling off. And, you know, these ones, they're very similar. They both say Japan on the, the metal there. They even have the stripes but obviously that's what a new plug looks like and it shouldn't turn to this in 20,000 miles. So we're gonna replace all the spark plugs and find some good OEM coils that he has in the van. This thing should be fixed. So the kicker here is I think that the plugs that wore out prematurely and the gap is huge probably caused this coil to fail prematurely, which sucks. So you might save a couple pennies on Amazon you get bogus plugs 
and then you cook your coil and you have a misfire and you might blow up your cat. So don't get cheap parts if you can help it. Uh, get them from a source that's trustworthy. Usually the parts stores, they won't sell you counterfeit NGK plugs. Or Rock Auto is usually pretty good. But Amazon, eBay for things like spark plugs, you know, don't, don't waste your time with that. <laughs> I w wouldn't recommend it. So here are the new plugs. And just for good luck, I give them a little spritz on the threads just to prevent corrosion, at least in the short term. And then you know, we'll take one, put it in our socket. And these, since they're at an angle, I'm not going to start them with the power driver. We're just going to gently insert these and start them by hand. And then once they're nice and started, you can always go to your favorite speed driver and just run them down and we'll torque them all to spec. So we'll do these guys and then with the coils, we have a whole pile of used coils here. I'm sure some of them are good, probably all of them, but we can check each one and write OK on the good ones. And I don't know, pretty, pretty straightforward. All right, so installed and torqued three new genuine Iridium NGK plugs. And I put those coils that he had sitting around four, five, and six, they're even numbered, because these guys were stressed out by the uh, counterfeit plugs and their aftermarket. So we're going to try just starting it with the OEM coils and good plugs, see how it runs. And if that's good, then that's a win. Oh yeah, sweet. That's a crisp Honda V6 sound right there. I love it. Uh, let's do the back plugs. Also reinstall. There's two non-original coils there aftermarket. So put in the good plugs, the good coils, and man, this van should be a rocket ship. So here's what I pulled out of the rear bank. So these front ones are obviously all counterfeit and super worn. On the rear bank, there's a counterfeit one that's worn. Then there's one that looks like it's actually a genuine unit and you can see the gap is perfect just fine and then we have a used one <laughs> one of the platinum plugs I guess it didn't change number whatever cylinder number three in the back very interesting but it's uh, it's nice to get this thing polished and put in all new plugs alrighty all the spark plugs are in and all OEM coils reinstalled start it up again make sure it's smooth Nice. Oh, I love that V6 sound. Very nice. All right, I like it. So this is all the junk. Actually, I might save that one as a spare. Tell the owner save that one. That's it. All right, here we go. Zero to 60 run. Oh man, this fan has some good power. That's yeah, smooth. Nice. I think the customer will be very pleased. I think it got off pretty easy. Didn't melt the cat down, thankfully. Just needed a tune-up and with good parts. <laughs> so watch out for those counterfeit plugs. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Quick bonus footage before giving the car back to the customer. I'm going to make sure there are no fault codes stored in the PCM, even though the check engine light's no longer on. So read fault code, current DTCs, no trouble codes there. And then let's also check the intermittent trouble codes no trouble codes awesome so that's it now we can give the car back to the customer job done 
One more thing you got to remember after an ignition misfire where the fuel is still getting in the cylinder, that oil, the engine oil is going to be diluted with fuel. So we're doing an oil change and that old oil smells like gas. So it was definitely time to change it anyways, but in this case, uh, even more so. So, you know, you think you fixed the problem, but those extra steps like clearing the codes, taking it for a test drive, doing the engine oil, it, that's all part of the full service to the customer. So this vehicle, once it leaves the shop, will be good to go for, you know, many thousand miles problem-free driving. Uh, we won't have any bad side effects.